disembarked from the flight, greeting me was just this dark sky. I was traveling between many cities and states in the country almost every week for the past two years. When I was taking this photo, it was 2 a.m. in the morning. As I walked down, that time, the flight was already delayed for two hours. As I was walking down from the plane, I whispered to myself, I'm all tired and I'm finally home. When I make a decision to set up my art gallery in Kuala Lumpur, together with my business partner, we were laying down the business plans. But at the same time as well, I received a call and an offer to serve my beloved community here in Penang. Uh, by the capacity of a non-governmental organization which I was affiliated to. I'm still affiliating to them, to them. I was thinking to myself, I don't want to regret letting go the opportunity. So I said yes to the opportunity of becoming a counselor serving in a local government. Deep inside my heart, I knew that it's not going to be a bed of roses having me to juggle among many different roles. Little did I know, lying ahead of me was not just purely physical challenge, um, having to travel a lot, but more serious than I could imagine, it was the mental exhaustion. From my art gallery, because uh, it was just a new startup, so as a new boss in a new company, I was, trying to, I was trying very hard to be a wonderful boss and I want to lead the company so that the company could perform. We have a very tiny team in there. So as a leader of the company, I have to take care of the business development, the marketing, the PR, the networking, the finance, the human resources, and the supplier management. And for your information, the supplier to most art galleries are basically artists. They are painters and sculptors, as you could have already imagined. It is going to be very tough dealing with them, and you need some extraordinary skill set to communicate with them and to work with them. Deep inside my heart, I want to do very well. And I was trying hard to enjoy the fact that the gallery job is taking 26 hours of mine in a day. And at the same time, I had to pick up the law books, stuffing my brain with all the local laws so that I can prepare myself for the local government and for the local council meetings and discussions. Also, I need to, needless to say, I need to follow the political development very closely so that I could be fully aware and understand the political concern and political climate which are relevant to the decision making in the local government level. I had a very high expectation of myself and I want to do well as well, being very objective, as objective as I could when I was voicing the concerns of the public. I started to travel back and forth between these two cities and of course not to mention to see a lot of people in other states. And a lot of time was spent on the flight and of course, as you imagine, it's very, very tiring. I start to forget things because there are too many things to remember. So if I don't take notes, I just forget everything. And I, I realized that I'm no longer that teenager who, who could stay up all night and still stay fresh in the next day. I'm already in my 30s. I eventually become reliant on black coffee more than drinking water. And I get anxious all the time. To top it up, there was some crisis in the family. Someone became very seriously ill, and my personal relationship, it went up in smoke because of misunderstandings and lack of communication. I felt that I wasn't emotionally supported enough, but vice versa, I wasn't really doing enough for the other party as well. Deep inside, I was feeling very, very unhappy, and. More than just that, I feel angry for being unhappy. And I couldn't find anyone to confide in because no one wants to listen to your stories. People around me, they just envy opportunities that I got because they say I'm a nobody. And they envy my 
super tight schedules, filling up with meeting, um, a lot of important people, very rich people like art collectors, interesting people like artists and the politicians and so on and so forth. They also envy me, seemingly flying here and there on social media, that I go everywhere to see art shows, party my nights away, clinking champagne glasses. But behind all the very nice, glitzy things, I bet you will understand there are many, many, many folds of efforts behind, which forever can't seem to be enough for me to achieve anything worth talking about. And this thing about adult world is that you don't share your problems with anyone because you don't want people to use your problems against you in future, maybe very soon in future. So that was when the depression kicks in. And many nights when I turns off, turns off, uh, turn off all the lights, as I tuck myself in, I stare blank at a whirling fan above my head, and flashing in my head are nothing but just endless to-do lists of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And endless bills of all the startups, and endless challenges. I couldn't sleep because I hate waking up to a new set of problems the next day, while I knew that I haven't solved all the problems of yesterday. The feeling was very scary. People look at my red eyes and my eye bags, they say, why didn't you get some sleep? But how am I going to tell them that I just couldn't? No one is interested in our problem. This is one thing that I learned in this real world, and no one really cares. What I need to do is to pick myself up, but more often than not, during then, I just thought to myself, perhaps, perhaps it's okay if I just die like that tonight. And that way I don't have to face my problems and face my unhappiness all the way. At this point, I call this absolute vulnerability, which was frankly scurrying all over through every single cell of my body. The only time social media has ever become my savior Saving me from all my morbid thoughts was when I was reading a story about a person in which the protagonist, when confronted with a question about his sadness, he say, you have to be happy to live, but I don't. It was like a lightning strike. And, oh my God, I haven't asked myself, I haven't even spoken to myself regarding this. Why do I need to be happy in order to live? Human conditions of living, very simple. Food, water, and air. And sunlight if you are a plant. But scientists never say happiness. So why am I complicating my own life up? You simply don't have to be happy in order to be functional. That's the thing that almost um, changed my thinking overnight. It's a very magical thing. And when I took away the desire of wanting to be happy off my shoulder, I suddenly felt an immediate sense of relief. Like I have unloaded a, big, a huge rock and hearing that loud, terrific thud, like boom. I became a lighter person. When your ultimate goal is happiness, and when things don't turn out well, which is almost for sure that it will become like that because no one, none of us, can have 100% smooth sailing in this life. So when that happened, what happened? You get swamped by self-pity. And guess what? It is the worst poison ever because self-pity is like a cling wrap when you wrap yourself with it, thinking that it's a mechanism of defense, you didn't realize that it's just an effort in vain. Not only that it doesn't protect you from your problems, from your troubles, you also miss the opportunity and perfect timing to nip the problem in its butt. And self-pity could also lead to self-destruction, just like all the morbid thoughts in my head. I've never had the courage to actually kill myself, but Maybe that's one good thing about me, not so courageous. And also, when, when I was thinking about this, and I was feeling, why didn't I 
take away the superstitious pursuit of happiness from my life. When I did that, it was an enormous paradigm shift altogether. I suddenly realized that I don't have to be emotionally responding or attached to all the problems that I have. And I was thinking, maybe I should take all the problems that happened to me just like a mathematics question. Like all your mathematics questions that you have uh, answered before in your high school workbook, you know, you may probably, you know, don't like them that much, but you've gone through it and you don't commit suicide, not, you know, just because you couldn't answer a question. And how do you tackle all these emotional things, all these bad feelings? Let me tell you how I deal with them. I just ticket them as passing weather. This is how I deal with it. All the, all the things that you like, all the, the, all the happiness, the upset feeling, the anxiety, they are just all passing weather. You may like or you may hate a particular type of weather, but guess what? You're going to get over it. It too shall pass. When you cannot hold rain in your grip, why can't you let go your unhappiness the same way? I ask myself a lot of times this question, and I constantly re remind myself of this. Mathematic questions, we all faced it before. And why is it that when we face our mathematics questions before, we can remain so calm and so focused and just to tackle them one by one, and why can't we do it right now? So I start to think of life as a lesson, and everything that happened in our life, whether it's a trouble at work, problem in a business or in a relationship, they are nothing more than just another question in your grammar or mathematics workbook. And some, some of these questions are easier to solve, you know, while others require a bigger effort or a longer period of time. When you were at school, I'm sure there were some questions you couldn't answer. And I bet you can't remember any of those questions by now, can you? See? how we get past the problem before. And again, ask yourself, why must I be emotionally responding to anything if it doesn't help me? Troubles, they're everywhere. They happen everywhere. But how do you deal with it? When you close up the emotional part of it, Certainly, the, inter the intellectual part and the professional part of it opens up calmly and differently. And you'll be able to tackle your problem by being focused to those questions. When you, when you have this intellectual thing uh, that keeps you focused, what you need to do, you suddenly become very much aware of the steps. You analyze the problem. You look at its nature, its causes, you lay down the alternatives, the pros and cons, you make a judgment, make a decision, and you carry the, the um, outcome, you carry out your action. And guess what? Emotions, they don't help in any of this. They don't help you from thinking very clearly because emotions don't belong to the intellectual side of it. Remember, life goes on. This has become my mantra. Life goes on, and in many years to come, the terrible things that happened to you today, you won't even remember. Whether it is happy or it is not, the sun just rises and sets as it would. The flowers blossom as they would. The nature takes its course as it would. Emotions, they sound very romantic. But really, it's not a necessity for all this to happen and to be in order. Ask yourself this. When a flower loses a petal, does it refuse to blossom again? Does a spider give up spinning a web after a storm? Does the sun require your wooing in order to rise again the next morning? They don't. So you, as a being of nature, why would you fall prey to your emotions and your unhappiness? Why would you rather run away from your problems but not to look at the alternative 
probably you can just only run away from the unhappiness and just take the problem by its horn. I learned to look at situations differently. And every time when I face a problem, not just to bear with it, I want it more. I want to pick up the other side of it and see if I can gain anything. I become very greedy in that sometimes. How? I start to imagine that it is true when people say, take the problems as a blessing in disguise. Just because you haven't found any purpose in an unfortunate event that happens to you doesn't mean that there isn't any in it. And whenever I feel that the vulnerability starts to crop in again, I constantly call myself um, and be alert of the emotion. I stop taking things personally. I watch myself. I keep myself away from drowning into the sea of negativity. And I digest the problem. Then you may ask how. I digest it because I want to get more things out of it. By looking at the possible positive outcome that when everything is over, just imagine what kind of a better person you will be. Like you will eventually gain some new skill sets after you tackle a technical issue at work, or you can probably um, gain some brownie points in terms of your industrial experience, or you will eventually become a more controlled and organized manager or becoming a more composed decision maker. All of this, they are all the possible positive outcomes. And after imagining all, all this, just try to focus back onto your problem, tackle it with the imagination of the end in mind, and then you'll find that suddenly, ta-da, you are one step closer to becoming a problem-solving oriented person. Sometimes I look at people um, having problems in their relationship and then I reflect on myself. If your problem is an argument in a relationship, again, very simple, put, your, put the unhappiness aside and avoid shouting. If you can keep your volume down, you'll find it magically keeping your cool together. And now you can start talking about the problem instead of throwing tantrum at each other. To be patient with someone is not so much about giving them the dignity. It is more to preserving your own esteem and elegance. And always remember this, in a relationship, the stronger person is the one who doesn't mind to lose. Talking about learning from our problems, I also like to imagine that problem is a kind of um, it's a kind of nutrition that we can absorb and we can grow from its nourishment. Think about grass. You can throw cow dung on grass and guess what? It still grows. In fact, it grows better. So you can put more cow dung on the grass. It doesn't really matter. Well, if all fails, and if you still find that it is very difficult to set aside unhappiness when it comes to dealing with your problem, try to look for a role model then. More often than not, you can always imagine, pick up the people around you and start to ask yourself, if your doctors just get upset over your health conditions and just walk away, how would that be to you? If your, what about your school teachers getting tired out of question, uh, answering your questions? And I don't believe a construction worker is happy at his job all day long neither. So guess what? Look around the world and look at your own country. Look at the leaders and the fighters who were put in jail or whose life was threatened because they fought for justice, for democracy, and for social well-being. If any one of them were to put happiness in his or her, to be his or her top priority, history would have been rewritten. And you and I won't even get a chance to enjoy the fruit of their labor. So now, 
you may ask yourself, how do these people carry on without thinking about happiness? But let me ask you first, can you imagine how haphazard the society would become if happiness is, every, is, some, is the only thing everyone pursues? Can you imagine happiness overrides duties, responsibilities, compliance, and ethics in your course of conduct? Can you imagine that? And so you may ask, if not happiness, what is supporting people to do whatever they do? The answer is pretty simple. There are many other values. Depending on your life experience, your beliefs, your faith, your calling, your mission, that could pretty much determine what you want to do, what you want to perform in your short life. That's why some people become scientists, while others become artists. Some people become activists, while others become therapists. Some choose to lead the country, some choose to do charity, some choose to put things in order for everyone. That's how it works for the society. And you, if you still choose to fall prey to your emotion, but not riding on your emotion, you are eventually just passing this world by like a brief storm and you won't leave anything behind. So I invite you to discover your own values and start thinking about things you really want to do. Human beings are designed for more than just that. So derive some values um, in things that you want to do. Try to make your presence felt by leaving a legacy behind you. Try to inspire people or see some other people's life being changed due to what you have done. And perhaps along the way, happiness would quite naturally follow in. As I was thinking about all these problems I had and how I tackled those, I, relocate, I relocated happiness in my priority ranking. But speaking about that, I'm still the passionate little girl who is very greedy and want everything from the world. And I also want a lot of things for the world. But now I have a more concrete purpose and I have a more visible and measurable impact that I could eventually see and I want to see that. But not just superstitious pursuit of simple happiness. You need not seek happiness actually. You need, what you need to do is to look for your own values do what you ought to and want to do, open up your arms, welcome happiness to flow in naturally. Happiness is still very important, but without it, you won't die. Life goes on. Thank you.